Hello students, 21st century is full of information, but what is important for us to have the right information. Having the right information can have a better life and having a wrong information can lead to a chaotic life. So, although we are surrounded by informations, but our duty is to find out and to segregate the correct information and to use those correct information in our life so that we can have a successful life. So, with this note, let us continue today's topic. So, here are certain frames in front of you. Observe it carefully and try to correlate it to our day to day life. The first picture as it suggests, a player is trying to hit the ball, it's a hockey player trying to hit a ball. Coming to the next slide, here you can see a player is trying to kick a football. The third slide, here you can see a cricketer, a batsman is hitting a cricket ball. Here you can see a athlete is trying to throw a javelin. So dear students, what do you correlate from all these four pictures? In all the four cases, they all are making an effort to move certain thing. First thing, in the first frame as you observe, the hockey player is trying to hit the ball. In the second frame you saw, the footballer is trying to kick a ball. In the third, a batsman is trying to hit a cricket ball. In the fourth frame, the player is trying to throw a javelin. So in all these cases, the player are making some effort and what that effort result into? That effort will result into the ball will move, the javelin will go to a certain distance. So dear students, the question here is, what causes this motion? Why does the speed of an object changes with time? You all must be playing football, cricket. When you are striking a ball, the ball changes its direction. It goes with a certain speed. Now, let us try to solve this question. What causes this motion? That effort we are doing or we are making on that object, on that ball or on the javelin, making it move or the changes in the speed. What is this effort called as? That effort is called as your force pushing, hitting and pulling of object are all ways of bringing object in motion. So dear students, we can understand from here, in all those four frame, the player were applying certain amount of force which cause that ball to move or the javelin travel a certain distance. So in our day to day life, we see a lot of such type of phenomena. And there, do we see that force or do we see the result of that force? Many a time, we get confused that we see a force. No, we cannot see a force, we cannot feel a force. But we can see the result of that force. We can see the effect of that force. In all those four frames, as we saw, the ball is moving because we applied a force. We did not see the force we saw the effect that ball is moving. The javelin will travel to certain distance. We will see the javelin traveling a certain distance, but we cannot see the force. So be very much clear about it that we cannot see a force. We can only see the effect of a force. So there are certain effects that we can conclude by applying force. What are the effect of force? If you apply force on any object, it changes the magnitude of velocity of an object. What does that mean? Suppose an object is traveling with a certain velocity or certain speed. Now if you apply certain amount of force on it, it will change its velocity. Suppose a football is approaching towards you, you kick it, it will go with certain other speed. A goalkeeper trying to stop a goal. In that case, 
ही इज अप्लाइंग सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ फोर्स इन ऑर्डर टू स्टॉप ए मूविंग बॉल दैट मीन्स द वेलोसिटी और द स्पीड इज कमिंग टू जीरो दैट मीन्स द बॉल इज कमिंग टू रेस्ट कमिंग टू द सेकेंड इफेक्ट ऑफ फोर्स चेंजेस इट्स डिरेक्शन ऑफ मोशन नाउ ऑल ऑफ यू हैव मस्ट प्लेड क्रिकेट वेन द बॉलर इज बॉलिंग अ बॉल टूवर्ड्स यू थ्रोइंग दैट बॉल टूवर्ड्स यू एंड यू आर टेकिंग ए स्ट्राइक वाइल टेकिंग ए स्ट्राइक वट यू डू यू अप्लाई योर टेक्निक टू डाइवर्ट और टू चेंज द डिरेक्शन ऑफ द बॉल एंड ऑल्सो द स्पीड एट विच दैट बॉल इज अप्रोचिंग टूवर्ड्स यू एंड द बॉल आफ्टर गेटिंग स्ट्राइक टू योर बैट इट चेंजेस इट स्पीड here what we see both change in the velocity and also the direction so let's have a look at the third effect of force that is changes the shape and size of the object in our day to day life we must have observed many a time when we apply certain amount of force on an object it changes its shape dear students let's perform an activity to understand the effect of force I have a balloon in my hand. What I am going to do is I am going to apply some amount of force on it. Just observe carefully. When I am pressing it, I am trying to press both the wall of the your balloon. What do you observe? The shape of the balloon is changing. Why is it so? Because we are applying force. So by applying force, we can change the shape of the balloon. So this is. one of the effect of force that it changes the shape or size of an object if you take a tomato in your hand and try to squeeze it what you will see that your tomato will get smashed that means its shape is changing take a rubber band and try to stretch it both the side what you will observe the size of the rubber band will change that means squeezing or stretching any object will change its shape and size so these are the three effects of force so dear students from all this discussion you can rightly guess today's our topic of discussion will be force and its effect so let's move on to the next part that is your balance and unbalanced forces what is balance force and what is unbalance force as you can read out the definition on your screen a pair of force acting on an object having equal magnitude but acting opposite in direction are called as balance forces and what is unbalance forces a pair of force acting on an object having unequal magnitude and acting opposite in direction are called as unbalance force let's discuss about it a pair of force acting on the same object having equal magnitude but opposite in direction that means if you apply 5 newton of force in the east direction and if you apply 5 newton of force in the west direction that means on that particular object you are applying the force in opposite direction but of equal magnitude in that case both the force as opposite to each other will cancel out so this type of force is called as balance force what is unbalanced force when the magnitude of the force is different one side if you take 10 newton of force and the other side if you take 15 newton of force that means they are unequal in magnitude and you apply in opposite direction the direction in which the higher value of that force is applied the object start moving in that particular direction you can get a clear idea about it by looking at the next picture that is on your screen and this is a very familiar game that we used to play in our childhood you must have played it also that is the tug of war as you can see both the opponent is trying to pull that trophy towards themselves in the first picture whenever somebody is applying more force then the other opponent is moving towards him and the second picture below it you can see 
in the both the opponent are applying equal amount of force that's why nobody is moving from their place so the first picture is an example of your unbalanced force whenever somebody is applying more force the other opponent is slightly moving towards the other opponent but in the second picture you can see both are at a same place not moving that means the force that is they are applying are equal in magnitude so here we get a clear idea about balance force and unbalanced force so balance force will never cause the motion of an object if you apply equal amount of force on an object in both the direction the object will not move but if you apply unbalanced force then the object will move so i guess it is very clear to all of you so let's look at the next picture in that frame as you can see two person are riding a bicycle and while riding a bicycle what do you observe when you go on pedaling your bicycle starts moving but the moment you stop pedaling the bicycle stops what is the reason behind it when you are pedaling the cycle that means you are applying force but when you stop pedaling the bicycle that means you are stopping applying the force on the bicycle the moment you stop applying the force on the bicycle that means it stops but why because the moment you stop applying the force an opposite force is acting on your bicycle that is your frictional force because of the frictional force the bicycle stops now from this activity from this picture it is quite evident that an object maintains its motion under continuous application of an unbalanced force that means in that previous picture that you saw the moment you stop pedaling the bicycle that means you are stopping applying the force and the frictional force has balanced the amount of force you had applied earlier and as the force becomes balanced the bicycle stops now if you want to move the bicycle further you have to apply again the force on it that means you have to apply unbalanced force but do you think only by applying unbalanced force we can make the object move it is not true because if there is no external force acting on an object then an object moves with a uniform velocity when the forces that is your pushing force or frictional force acting on the object are balanced and there is no external force on it so when the force is completely balanced the object will try to move in a uniform velocity even though you are not applying the external force but in practical having external force as zero achieving an external unbalanced for force as zero is quite difficult is not possible and because of that whenever you are applying an unbalanced force on the object there will be a change either in its speed or in the direction of its motion so in order to accelerate the motion of an object an unbalanced force is always required as you go on applying force the speed or the direction of the object will change so i guess now you are very much clear about balance force and unbalanced force when you are trying to push a table or a box initially what you observe that you are not able to push that box because it is heavy but when you apply more amount of force you take a little more effort on that box the box starts moving the first condition when the box is not moving that is because the force that is you are applying on that box gets balanced due to the frictional force because 
फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स ऑलवेज एक्ट्स अपोजिट टू द डिरेक्शन ऑफ अप्लाइड फोर्स द मूवमेंट यू ओवरकम द अमाउंट ऑफ फोर्स अप्लाइड बाय फ्रिक्शन देन द बॉक्स स्टार्ट्स मूविंग दैट मीन्स हियर इन दिस कंडीशन द पेयर ऑफ फोर्स योर फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स एंड द फोर्स यू आर अप्लाइंग बिकम्स अनबैलेंस्ड सो अनबैलेंस्ड फोर्स विल कॉज द ऑब्जेक्ट टू मूव फॉर ए बैलेंस फोर्स विल सेल नॉट कॉज द ऑब्जेक्ट टू मूव सो we can see here the relation between force and motion so the first scientist who established a relationship between the applied force and motion of the object was your galileo and he performed one activity an experiment to prove the relation between force and the motion so let's have a look at a video that will give us a clear insight into the experiment that was performed by galileo he imagined a ball rolling down an inclined plane on the left and then rolling up an adjacent identical inclined plane on the right for the purposes of his thought experiment he assumed the surface of both the ball and the inclined plane to be perfectly smooth so that the forces of friction could be considered absent he considered all other external factors that might affect the state of the body to also be absent after rolling down the first incline the ball rolled up the second incline until it reached the same height from which it was released he then imagined what would happen if the second incline was at a slightly lesser angle the ball rolled down the first incline and it still rose to the same height on the second incline however it now traveled a longer distance due to the angle being less steep he realized that it now takes more time to reach the same height on the second incline galileo then imagined an even smaller angle on the second line now the ball will take a much longer time to reach the same height before coming to a stop galileo then reasoned that if the second plane was flattened the ball would continue to roll off the first incline and across the flat surface never stopping it would continue to roll as long as there was no other event affecting the rolling motion of the body so what do you observe in that video galileo took one ball and another surface which was completely frictionless that means there was a minimum friction then when he allowed that ball to drop from a certain height what he observe that the height from which the ball started rolling from the first incline plane it started also rising and climbing to that height from which that ball was dropped now by changing the angle of the inclination the ball tried to reach that height from where it was dropped but here as the inclined plane the angle was slightly reduced the distance traveled by the ball was greater and similarly when the inclination was made zero the ball tried to move continuously without stopping that was the claim by galileo but in reality as we know having a frictionless surface is impossible that means the ball will roll down to a certain place a certain distance after that it will stop because of the frictional force so the relationship between the applied force and the motion of object was further studied by another scientist known as your sir isaac newton after studying the relationship between the applied force and motion of the object he formulated three laws and which is called as the newton's laws of motion so there are three fundamental laws that governs the motion of object and these laws are called as your newton's laws of motion so let's look at the first law of motion which is called as newton's first law of motion 
द फर्स्ट लॉ ऑफ मोशन स्टेटेड एज एन ऑब्जेक्ट रिमेन्स इन ए स्टेट ऑफ रेस्ट और ऑफ यूनिफॉर्म मोशन इन ए स्ट्रेट लाइन अनलेस कंपेल टू चेंज दैट स्टेट बाय एन अप्लाइड फोर्स लेट्स ट्राई टू एलाबोरेट इट वट इज फर्स्ट लॉ ऑफ मोशन सजेस्ट दैट इफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट इज एट रेस्ट लाइंग ऑन द ग्राउंड और एन सर्फेस इट विल कंटिन्यू टू बी देयर अंटिल एंड अनलेस यू अप्लाई एन एक्सटर्नल फोर्स ऑन इट एंड इफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट इज इन मोशन इट विल कंटिन्यू टू बी इन दैट मोशन अंटिल एंड अनलेस यू अप्लाई एन एक्सटर्नल फोर्स ऑन इट इट इज क्वाइट एविडेंट फ्रॉम आवर डे टू डे लाइफ ऑल्सो इफ ए फुटबॉल इज लाइंग ऑन द ग्राउंड Until and unless you kick it, kicking means you are applying force. Only when you will apply a force on it, then only it will start rolling. Then only it will start moving. Similarly, you take another example. Same in that football ground. When a football is approaching towards you, it is moving towards you. The goalkeeper supposedly want to stop it. You can bring that motion into rest only by applying a force. so this is what newton's first law of motion suggest that an object remains in a state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change that state by an applied force so always to change the state an external force is required an external unbalanced force is required and this is the property also where the object will always try to resist the change in its state if it is if the object is at rest it will try to be at rest that means it will try to resist any change if the object is in motion it will try to resist to come into the rest position because it is in motion and because this is resisting this property of an object is also called as inertia so let's look at the definition so the tendency of undisturbed object to stay at rest or to keep moving with the same velocity is called as inertia and because of this the first law of motion is also known as the law of inertia that means inertia is the property of an object to resist the change of its state here your inertia can be of three types inertia can be classified into three types depending on different situation what are these three inertia the first one is called as inertia of rest the second one is called as inertia of motion and the third one is called as the inertia of direction let's elaborate it inertia of rest means if the object is at rest it will try to be at rest that means it will try to counter it will try to resist any kind of change on it similarly inertia of motion that means if an object is moving in motion it will try to continue in it that state state of motion until and unless you are applying an external force so it will always resist the change of its motion similarly if an object is moving in a particular direction it will try to continue to move in that particular direction until and unless you apply an external force on it only if you apply a force then only it will change its direction so these three are called as the inertia of rest inertia of motion and inertia of direction so dear students at this point let us watch a video related to inertia so that the concept will be very much easy to understand certain experiences that we have while traveling in a bus can be explained on the basis of the law of inertia when a passenger is standing in a stationary bus that suddenly moves the movement pushes the passenger backward why does this happen This is due to the inertia of rest experienced by the passenger in the upper part of his body. The body is at rest when the bus is at rest. 
When the bus starts all of a sudden, the lower part of the body is in contact with the vehicle that started moving. Whereas the upper part of the body continues to be at rest because of the inertia of rest. What happens when a fast moving bus negotiates a right hand curve on the road? The passengers will tilt to the left. Inertia of direction is the tendency of a body to oppose any change in the direction of its motion. With the application of sharp brakes, the bus stops all of a sudden and the passengers tend to fall forward. This is due to inertia of motion experienced by the upper part of the body. When the bus is moving, the whole body of the passenger is in a state of motion. A sudden halt caused by the lower part of the passenger's body that is in contact with the bus comes to rest. However, the upper portion of the body remains in the state of motion due to the inertia of motion causing the passenger to fall forward when the bus stops suddenly. So dear students, I think all of us have experienced this in our day to day life while travelling in a bus or in a car. When the bus immediately start moving, we tend to fall backward. Why is it so? Because with respect to the bus, at initially we are at rest. The moment the bus start moving, our body try to be in the state of rest. But as the bus has started moving, by law of inertia, our body will resist the change and because of that we tend to fall backward. Similarly, when the bus makes a break and try to stop it, the moment bus comes to a halt, our body will resist the change due to inertia. Here the law of inertia of motion is applied because our body will try to continue in the state of motion. But the bus has already stopped and because of which we will lean forward or will fall downward towards our face. So because to prevent all these fatalities or casualties while traveling in a car we use the seat belt so that accidents or this mishaps can be prevented. Now dear students one question comes into mind. Do all object have the same kind of inertia? That means an object of 1 kg and an object of 10 kg, will they have the same kind of inertia? Let us try to find out the answer. So if you can see, there is a football lying on the ground and there is a stone on the ground. If we try to kick the football and the stone with the same force, do you think both the object will move at the same speed or the same velocity? The answer is obvious no. The football will fly away whereas if you won't be very much careful while kicking the stone you may get hurt. Why is it happening? The ball is flying away whereas the stone lies at the same place that is again because of the mass of that object. Although both of them will try to resist the change in their state, both are at rest. So they will try to be at rest. But because the football has less mass, it will offer less resistance whereas as the stone is heavy, it will offer more resistance. So, we call it as the ball has, the football has less inertia whereas the inertia, the magnitude of inertia in the stone is much more. That means the ball will fly away, the stone will lie at that same place. So, let dear students, let us perform one activity here to understand the inertia. How applying force or how heavy object have more inertia and lighter object have low inertia that we will verify with a simple activity. So here 
will perform the activity. What do we have? I have a glass, I have a cardboard and two coins. What I am going to do is that I will place this cardboard on the glass, on the coin on the cardboard and I will strike the cardboard with a push. So what do you observe? The coin falls into the glass. What is the reason behind it? Initially, the coin and the cardboard was at rest. But applying force on the cardboard, it flies away. But the coin, due to its inertia, will resist the change. It will try to be in the state of rest and because of which it will be at that same place and the moment that cardboard flies away, it will fall into the glass. So, this is an example of inertia or the first law of motion. So, I think from the activity it was very much clear that the heavier the object more will be its inertia. That means inertia can be measured quantitatively by its mass. We may say that inertia and mass have the following relationship. Inertia is a natural tendency of an object to resist a change in its state of motion or rest. The mass of an object is a measure of its inertia. So, today we will conclude our lesson here. Let us recall what we have studied so far. We studied about force, effect of force, balanced and unbalanced force. We discussed about Newton's first law of motion. We discussed about the different type of inertia, inertia of rest, inertia of motion and inertia of direction. Now, at this point, we will evaluate ourselves how much we have grabbed and how much we have understood the topic. So, here is some question for you. Try to answer it honestly. Which of the following has more inertia? A rubber ball and a stone of the same size. So, out of the rubber ball and the stone, which will have more inertia? I guess you can easily answer it. The stone will have more inertia. Why the stone? Because the stone will obviously heavy than a rubber ball. Now, moving on to the next question. Why uh, some of the leaves may get detached from a tree if we vigorously shake its branch? That means, if you can try at your home also, you can do it, but do not damage that tree. You hold a tree and try to shake it. What you will observe? Some of the leaves will fall down. They will detach from the branches. Question is, what is the reason behind it? That means, we can also apply some of the concept that we have learnt in this topic. That is, before shaking the tree, the branches, the trunk, the leaves were at rest. The moment we start applying force, that means, we are shaking the tree, we are setting them into a motion. So, by their natural tendency to resist the change in their state, they will try to be at rest. That means, the leaf will try to be at rest, but we are applying force and because of that, due to inertia of rest, the leaves will detach from the branches. So, due to, you know, the answer is due to inertia of rest, the leaves will detach from the branches. Now, the third question is very much interesting. Why is it advised to tie any luggage kept on the roof of a bus with a rope? Suppose you are traveling a longer distance in a bus or in a car. If you have kept your luggage on the roof of that car or bus, you need to tie it with a rope. If not, what will happen? I guess you can answer it also. Because when we are traveling in a bus or a car, many a time the velocity changes, the direction also changes. That means, whenever there will be any kind of change, 
the object that means the luggage which is kept on the roof of the bus or a car they will try to resist it suppose we are traveling in a straight line in a straight path immediately we take a left turn but the luggage will try to continue in its own motion that is own direction in a straight line so because of this resistance if you have not tied that luggage with the help of a rope that will fell off from the rooftop so the answer is on in front of your screen due to inertia of motion and direction the luggage cell fall off the roof so that's all for today revise the lesson read the concept and try to solve some more questions related to it next class will continue from here till then take care